Drawing Equivalent Resonance Structures, Example 2. Okay, so we've already seen a couple of examples of drawing equivalent resonance structures. So this is a chance for you to try it on your own and compare your answers as we go through the presentation. You want to draw the complete, most preferred Lewis structure for sulfur trioxide, where sulfur is the central atom. So go ahead and pause the presentation and work the problem all the way out, including calculating the partial formal charges and the partial bond order. All right, so let's go ahead and go through it. Okay, so for steps one and two, first thing we want to do, count up all our valence electrons and connect our atoms together and figure out how many electrons we've used so far. So this is general for drawing a Lewis structure at any time, any Lewis structure. So we get six valence electrons for sulfur. We have three oxygens and each one of those guys contributes six. And we have no charge on the overall molecule so we don't add it, add or subtract any extra electrons, so we get 24. And when we connect everything together with sulfur as the central atom, then we've used two, four, six electrons in that structure so far. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add lone pairs to the outer atoms. So we want to complete the octets on all of the outer atoms. We can move electrons from there if we want to, if we need to, but let's go ahead and add them to the outside atoms. And so now we've used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So we've distributed all of the electrons and no electrons remain for the central atom. Now let's check for octets. All the oxygens have octets, but sulfur does not. So that means we're going to have to move electrons around and form multiple bonds. Now. Sulfur is only short one bond, so that means we only need to want, move one electron pair. So let's go ahead and take this electron pair. We could have taken this one or this one, doesn't matter. So let's take this electron pair, make a double bond here, okay? And once we do that, then this oxygen still has an octet. Now sulfur does, and of course these guys haven't changed, so they still have their octet. All right, so let's go ahead and calculate the formal charges. So you want to mentally break all the bonds in the molecule. So that's shown here. And remember, we split the electrons evenly, okay? So in this structure, this oxygen ends up with six, this one ends up with seven, this one ends up with seven, and sulfur ends up with four, okay? So we're going to calculate formal charge for each atom by taking the number of valence electrons minus the number of electrons assigned after that division. So for sulfur, we're going to get, sulfur has six valence electrons and four electrons were assigned. So that means that formal charge is plus two, okay? And then formal charge for the double bonded oxygen is zero, six minus six. And of course, the two oxygens with three lone pairs plus the bond, those guys are, are assigned seven electrons. So they're going to end up with a negative one formal charge. Now just to remind you, all the formal charges have to add to the overall charge on, this, on the molecule, and this molecule, sulfur trioxide, does not have a charge. So all these formal charges should add to zero. So let's check. Negative one plus negative one, that's negative two, plus two gives us zero. So we're in good shape there. Okay, so can other equivalent structures be drawn? Well, of course they can. So we chose to put the double bond here but there's no reason why it couldn't be here or here. Drawing those other structures, we're going to end up with these three equivalent resonance structures. And we have to draw all three of these to fully describe the bonding in sulfur trioxide. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate the partial formal charge, okay? So we have three equivalent atoms, so each one of these guys can have the double bond three equivalent atoms, and two of them have negative one formal charge. So if we sum those together, we get negative two divided by the three equivalent atoms, giving us a negative two-thirds partial formal charge on each, each oxygen. And then calculating the fractional bond order, again, let's count the bonding electron pairs on one of our resonance forms. So we have four bonding electron pairs divided by three equivalent bonds, okay, 
And so the bond order for this is four thirds or one and a third. Okay, so an electron pair is delocalized over all of these bonds. Okay, so as we learned before, the actual structure or the actual bonding picture of sulfur trioxide is actually a superposition of all three of these individual resonance forms. So basically, if we can average them all out, then we would get one composite structure that has a bond length about 1.3 times the length of a single bond. All those sulfur oxygen bonds would be the same length, and they're still shorter than a double bond. And this can be shown experimentally, so we can demonstrate that that bond order is about 1.3, as opposed to two of the oxygens having a bond order of one with this sulfur oxygen single bond, and one of the oxygens having a bond order of two. This bond would be shorter if that were actually true, but of course it's not, because all three of these resonance forms are equivalent, and they're required to describe the bonding in sulfur trioxide.